would like to thank all of our patrons for your continued support. Pretty nice, eh? Hello friends, we're here on Tritea. We spent the day provisioning, getting everything together, packing up all of our gear. We um, got our scuba tanks filled and rented an extra tank uh, because some like this one, four in the morning this morning. We're gonna head to White's Cove, more specifically Buttonshell Beach. Um, our main reason for this trip is because Mr. Steady, the hound, <clears throat> is very scared of fireworks. So um, we figured White's is directly in the middle between Avalon and Two Harbors, so hopefully there won't be many fireworks there. Um, and we're going to be there 4th, 5th, 6th, and we're going to head home on the 7th. So Camille provision today. Found a lot of food. Lots of food. What else? Also, we didn't really have enough space in our little cheap cooler. So, like, while I was doing boat work, Camille's like, oh, I'll run by a cooler. And then what did you come back with? I got a Yeti. She got a beautiful Yeti, which we'll show you guys tomorrow. <clears throat> beautiful Yeti, which, you know, we'll use it forever. It's They're amazing coolers, but, yeah, unsupervised... Uh, Unsupervised. I couldn't believe she I she, cru money. she cruised up with the Yeti. I was like, dang, you went hard. But um, so now we have a nice Yeti, and it'll hold all of her lobster and fish and everything she plans on catching. So it'll all come out in the end. But um, so we're gonna be at White's <clears throat> Button Shell Button Shell Beach. We plan on finding a good spot. Um using a bow and stern anchor and um, staying in one place for the whole time, which is kind of rare for me. I like to move on and see new things, but this place is going to be cool. I've never been there. It's supposed to be like really good for anchoring, which is rare at Catalina. And um, we have two tanks each, so we're going to get two dives in while we're there. I don't think there's a fill station. If there is, that would be amazing, but um, we'll at least get to dive two different spots. And at Button Shell, there's two different locations that are noted as dive sites. <clears throat> so, it's going to be a nice weekend. Going to do some hiking, get the dog chasing the frisbee. He's getting real good at catching it. And um, looking forward to exploring a new anchorage on the island that we've never been to. Um, we've already had dinner. Now it's time to um, crawl into V-Burf and go to sleep because... I'm gonna wake up at four and we're gonna head out. Um, it's only like a six hour passage. There's very little wind, uh, I think like five or six knots. So I have the, um, like the Jenniker, like hanked on and uh, we'll see what we can get out of it. I don't, I don't think there's gonna be much. That's one of the reasons we're leaving so early is cause there's not any forecasted wind for tomorrow any different so if we're going to be motor sailing anyway i would rather get there early in the morning and get a good spot to drop the hook um we'll check back in with you guys as we're motoring out um heading pa past the lighthouse and course of 197 straight to button what did i say button shell cove It's like 4.45 a.m. Me and Steady got the boat already. Had some coffee. It's very warm out, like t-shirt warm out. Very dry. 
it was a, there's a small craft advisory for Santa Cruz Island, but I rechecked all the wind and it's it's all coming off Point Conception, nothing around Catalina. So time to untie and head for the island. Super easy motor cell. There's another pot of dolphins off our starboard side right now. That first set, man, they were heading to breakfast. They didn't pay us no mind. They just went right under us. These guys seem like they're heading the same direction. There's like just enough wind generally to um, keep the jinniker full, which is helping us. We're going about four and a half knots with the motor on. Making our way very, very mellow seas, which is nice. My beautiful wife is still asleep in the V berth. The puppers are sleeping at my feet. We're just heading to the island. Looking forward to this weekend. Repair on my um, Jenniker just failed. Uh, so I'm gonna have to drop it, put it away, and um, put up the 150. So that's where we're at. Will you open that half lazarette? 
undo this. Kind of feed it out to me if it looks like I need it. Okay. Oh, I need that. Really rough anchoring today. Not because the conditions or anything. Um, I don't know. It was, uh, we tried the same way we did it at Little Harbor, where we dropped our stern anchor and then paid it out into deeper water. And um, like you see behind us, there's like that little boat on a mooring ball. There's other boats over there. Basically, where that, that little boat behind me is, that mooring ball is in about 20 feet of water. So we went into like 18 feet of water, dropped the stern anchor, drove forward into like the predicted direction of the swell best we could, and then dropped the bow in around 50 feet of water and then paid backwards. But we were getting pushed by the swell sideways, so it just went haywire. Um, I ended up pulling up the stern anchor and rowing it out and setting it just now. And uh, now everything seems happy. Now we can pay more scope out on the bow if we need to. Um, so we'll see, live and learn. So here we are at uh, Button Shell Cove or Button Shell Beach. Um, there's not very many boats here, which is nice. Uh, coming in, we could see White's Complex and it's packed over there. There's so many boats. We came in here, there's like, what, six boats on mooring balls. Um, everything seems to be holding now. I'm kind of sitting anchor watch at the moment, to see how she does. Camille went ashore with the pup. You can see him over there. And uh, he is very excited to be ashore. And um, yeah, it's a cute little camp up there. I, I have conflicting reports on one thing is said it was like a marine biology thing. Another thing said it was Glendale YMCA. That looks like a YMCA like camp, so that makes sense. So here we are at tech. We're at White's region, I guess, but um, technically at Button Shell Cove, Catalina Island, Fourth of July, 2019. So we have a uh, sort of a situation on board. The packing nut was leaking really bad when we got in. <clears throat> the bilge pump was running a lot, so pulled everything out, got down there move the bilge <clears throat> pump hose out of the way so I could try to get the packing nut, fought that thing for like 20 minutes, got it to slow down. And then uh, after that, I hear the bilge pump making a weird sound. And uh, I pull everything off and it's like when I pulled the hose to clear to get the wrench in, it pulled it out of its like footing and now it won't work. So, um... The packing that's still leaking, not as bad. Right now I'm gonna get back in there and try to get it completely stopped. I got out my emergency bilge pump and emptied out what water it accumulated since the thing stopped working. But, um, such a bummer. Camille's still ashore with the pup, so she doesn't even know any of this is happening. Uh, so now I'm gonna get in there and try to stop the water from coming in. Um, I guess if nothing else, we can use our like emergency bilge pump like set a timer and like every so often like, drain it that way but um after i get the water to slow down to a crawl i'm going to try to pull the bilge pump out and see if i can get it to work fingers crossed okay so i got the packing nut tightened down so that there's almost no water coming in i just pulled up the bilge pump it looks like there's something stuck inside the fans hopefully we can just pull that out and it'll work We'll see. Um, it's like a piece of plastic or something. Hopefully it's not from inside. But we'll find out. Um, the emergency bilge pump works perfect, so either way we're all right. Uh, let's see if we can get this thing to work. So here's the plastic. Oh, it's off of the base. So like this attaches to the base, then this clips into. So you screw the base down and then this clips in after you wire it up. So hopefully it didn't destroy the motor. Maybe it was just resisting it. Let's see. Let's turn it on manual. 
Oh my gosh. That is wonderful news. Um, now we're gonna put the bilge pump down, back down in there and see how she works. Let's turn it on. It's on auto, so I'm gonna go ahead and lift the float and we'll see if it works. It does. Let's try our emergency one. High water alarm. Okay, that works. Okay, so oh, thankfully we are able to fix it. That was a real scare. Not fun. I need to clean my bilge when I get home. Now even more excitement from Button Shell Co. First of all, the winds picked up and came, you know, tearing through this canyon here. And we took a nap, woke up from the nap, peaked up, and we're no longer stern to shore, which is bad because we had a stern anchor out. Um, I ran out. All I did was pull the stern anchor out. We're, it blew us. It was blowing us towards the sea. We're in 44 feet of water, which is good. It's better than the other option. <clears throat> the bow anchor is holding, but I can't let any more scope out because when we swing back around, we'll hit the rocks. So we're gonna haul up and actually move. Um, Camille and Steady went ashore, and she said it was kind of it was too strange. Like you're right in the middle of like a kid's camp, like a like there's just children doing camp too stuff everywhere <clears throat> too many girl scouts or what there's both girls and boys it's a scout camp but when you when you go up on shore they're a little i mean it's super adorable it looks like a like an 80s like like camp literally but when you go ashore right when you get there they're little they're little camp houses their cabins are right there so you would have to like it just feels awkward. It's all all of a sudden you're walking like directly into their, into their camp. Yeah, so we don't want to do that. We want to be able to take steady ashore and be comfortable and everything. And the wind is like tearing through here right now. The whole thing, every aspect of anchoring here has been no bueno. So we're gonna pull up and go over into white somewhere and be on a single hook tonight in deeper water. Um, at least then I know I can like light out as much scope as I want. And control it control it a little better so um that's what we're gonna do right now haul up well i've already pulled the stern anchor that was just floating um up on the deck and uh now we're gonna haul up and uh move down closer into more into whites Mm hmm Wait. Hey, wait. Wait. <laughs> wait. Wait. <laughs> Good job, steady. So, long story longer, we're back at Button Shell. We went over. We went over to White's, and as I suspected from the endless amount of um, power boats, it was like party central over there. Is not the vibe we're looking for. And then at 5 o'clock, they started blasting off cannons. 
and the poor dog was having a heart attack. So we came back over here, gonna make the best of it, do some diving tomorrow and maybe move, who knows, but we're gonna cruise back ashore, let the pup do nature's call. See what it's all about. I wish. So cool. <clears throat> Steady dog. We're gonna go that way. like a called Camp Fox. Lots of activity happening. Not sure if we're supposed to be here or not, but dog's gotta do his thing. These, these little cabins are radical though. They're like completely open to the air and you can see the bunks. Super cool. If I was a kid, I'd have lost my mind here. It's cool. So what was that landing like? Wasn't perfect, wasn't the worst, but a little tricky with the dog that doesn't want to stay in the boat. I don't know how you did it earlier. I got wet. <laughs> that camp is super cute, right? It's adorable. It's just totally full of children. We are anchored really <laughs> far away, but what's funny, look how close these rocks are. Very strange. Once you're ashore, though, it looks like the boat is like a mile away. I don't understand it. Light's pretty right now, though. It is. Let's try to recap today, because I think a lot of the footage is very spotty um we made good time like six hours from the um, marina to um <clears throat> button shell cove and uh we got to button shell cove and dropped the hook we had a lot of problems getting the stern anchor to set because it suggested that you, you get in tight in 20 feet of water, you drop your stern anchor, you have a bow anchor, and uh, we had two failed attempts at that. There's like, Whites is right down the way. So we're like, and it looked crowded, and it was packed with like power boats and everything. So I was afraid it was going to be like party central. We hauled up again, and... We went over to White's and we motored around for like half an hour trying to figure out where to anchor because it was all taken up. There were a couple sailboats there and we talked to one of the dudes asking what kind of scope he had out. But there was just no place I felt safe not knowing what other, other people's scope was. There was no place I felt safe. So we ended up going like way past everyone else close to what's called Moonstone Cove or something. We were the last boat. We went as far away from everyone as we could. And of course, as we're pulling to the past the last boat in the string, they're, they're blasting loud music and like, you know, they're already partying and it was like 5 p.m. It was like 4.30 or something. So I'm like, well, we dropped the hook there and got it all set. We're on a single hook, plenty of scope. We're happy. I don't remember where, like 40 feet of water or something. And it come five o'clock, they all start shooting off cannons. And it's like the sound hands. is like ricocheting off the cliff face and setting up fireworks. And that's the whole reason we came on this trip was to try to get the dog as away from fireworks because where we live in downtown Los Angeles is insane. And we're like, oh no. So 
that was a small taste of what is going to happen tonight in that anchorage. So, we hauled up again and decided we were going to try to go to Goat Harbor, but it's like really unprotected. It's like past button shell and around the corner. And so we motored back like mile and a half towards button shell. And as we got to button shell, we could see white caps everywhere around the corner. So we knew that we were in like a really protected area and that we were about to get hammered with the afternoon winds, which they died down. But we also didn't know if Goat Harbor was full. So we're, we're back here at a button, button mash with a button shell. Um, but we anchored way out on a single hook. Um, we anchored probably in 70 feet of water and I let out tons of scope and we didn't bother with the stern anchor cause we're far enough out and we're just going to sink, sink, swing on this hook tonight. It's pretty rolly. We have a rocker stopper out, but we'll, we'll be fine. It's not as bad as it was at Little Harbor that one night. Right. And that one night was ridiculous. Yeah. So this is fine. Yeah. This will be totally fine. manageable. And then we took the, you know, after we got the hooks out again, we um, took the dog ashore just now, wore him out real proper. Goofy style. And um, my arms feel like jelly from, you know, I have that, I have the manual windlass, but it's a severe workout and you have to pull it quite a bit to even get it to happen. So I'm pretty beat. Um, hopefully tomorrow, I would like to stay here if possible. We might move back in and drop the stern anchor so that we're kind of in into the swell the way I wanted to be. Um, I really want to dive here and I don't want to motor the boat every single day. We're only out for a couple of days so that's what happened today because I don't know the footage might be very spotty. We'll see. And this is my wife and all of her. And there's a hound. It's very wet. So we're gonna have second dinner now and if the sun would ever go down, I'm going to go to sleep. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. It helps us a lot. Thanks again to all of our patrons. Your contributions help us get the boat ready for big things. Until next time. fucking close to us. It's so rude. It's like when the person stands next to you on the subway and like breathes on you and you look at them mean and you're like get the fuck away from us and then they still don't. <laughs>